Welcome back to The Price of Business. This is William Edmondson in for Kevin Price. I'd like to introduce my next guest. His name is Frank Cottle, and he is chairman and CEO of ABCN. Uh, Frank, good to have you on the show. ABCN, of course, is Alliance Virtual Offices uh, as well. Uh, thank you, Edmund. Great to be on the show. Great to join you. Glad to have you here. So uh, for the listeners that may not may not know you, you are a guru of the office and shared office as a service industry and uh, somebody who I've worked with for, for many years. And uh, last time you were on the show, we talked about a lot of trends in the industry and how really things are changing out there, the way that people work, the way that people get things done. Uh, what are you seeing out there, Frank? Well, I think it's one of the largest shifts, equal almost to the shift as strong as the industrial revolution that's going on right now, and that's mobility in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Uh, According to the IDC study that was done last year, there will be 1.6 billion mobile workers in the workforce globally by the end of the year 2017. Uh, The estimates are right now that we've almost already reached that, and it could be well above that number. Wow, that's that's staggering. You know, it's it's it's, am, it's amazing what being untethered from the the wall, literally from the wall outlet, going to your computer, you know, being able to walk around with it all on a on a smartphone, uh, really changed the world, didn't it? Well, it really does. I remember my very first uh, portable computer. It was referred to was about the size of a carry on suitcase uh, <laughs> with a ten inch screen and no hard drive. That was back in about seventy nine eighty, uh-huh. and today I walk around with a smartphone that has more capacity than the supercomputers of that era. Yeah. Um, so it uh, really has made a lot of change, and it's not just a smartphone; it's all aspects of mobility in the workplace. And I think the biggest shift that we've seen um, is the globalization of the labor market. You don't need to cross a border to work in another country anymore, uh, and the. Um, open-mindedness of the, this current generation of management that doesn't believe they have to watch everybody sitting at a desk and work in order to know the person's being productive. And that shift comes from oh, government agencies uh, on down. In fact, government is one of the largest users of the mobile workforce uh, overall, one of the biggest trend shift uh, agents, you might say. Yeah, that's amazing. Of course, government is so huge that, uh, you know, you, you, you think about how many agencies they add and how much more space they would continue to need if they, if they didn't do some of that. Well, that's it. And the way they look at it, it's not just a matter of space utilization, uh, although that's critically important, but they're looking at the workforce right now. And there's just a project done in Washington, D.C. with a, a major federal agency, the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, mm-hmm. who... Um, made a decision to relocate its workforce outside of D.C. um, for cost reasons, but mostly because the workforce itself lived outside of D.C. Right. And they didn't just say, well, we'll buy a new building or build new offices there, and then everybody can go go to that office. They built a complete office complex based on touchdown space where anybody could walk in, walk up to a kiosk, uh, identify themselves, and then a workplace was assigned to them. And they could work from that w- workplace for an hour or a day or a week, whatever is needed. And so a lot of people work from their homes. A lot of people work uh, from a variety of desks, and a few people certainly still work in permanent offices. But they completely reorganized the, the manner by which the workforce is used uh, and the cost savings and the hours of commuter traffic and the traffic congestion savings, all elements in the lifestyle of those workers has been improved. So that agency now has more people that want to work for it instead of more people trying to find jobs closer to their home. Yeah, and and what's what's really nice, I mean, of course, the traffic is a a huge thing. Not not only the fact that it takes traffic off the road, but the fact that you don't have to burn two hours of your day sitting in a car. Well, that's right. You don't have to burn that extra five or ten gallons of fuel every day. Yeah, uh, which uh, naturally isn't the best thing for the environment uh, or your pocketbook. Yeah, and and I can I can tell you firsthand that that uh, after the the last couple of companies that I've run uh, were sold, my commute is going across the hall, and 
it, it sure is nice. I've got an extra couple of hours I can be uh, productive with or, uh, you know, I can I can go uh, put the wash into the dryer if that's you know, if that's high on the priority list. Well, uh, that that is one of the issues and, and one of the, the good things about mobility in the workplace. It's also one of the bad things. Um, you can't escape your work anymore. You can't leave the office yeah. um, as, as conveniently as you did. And this is what companies are finding is that people that work remotely um, actually put in more hours than less hours. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll use those extra two hours a day, let's say, that commute time. They'll use one of those two hours uh, to working uh, on their own time. Uh, and so uh, they'll, be, they'll be starting at 8 o'clock rather than getting to the office at 8 o'clock and then getting a cup of coffee and then organizing themselves. Usually people start right on the dot or even sooner because it's so easy. Yeah. <clears throat> the fact that you do your laundry is a whole different topic, topic we probably shouldn't discuss. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it I mean it it really is interesting what what's going on and uh it, we've we've got about uh, two and a half more minutes. Um tell us a little bit about how offices are changing, how companies are changing the way they think about the physical space. Well, I think what we're seeing in that mobility in the workforce is that more and more people are using uh, virtual offices or a network of offices than they did before. Mm-hmm. I'll use myself as an example. In fact, I'll use our company as an example. Uh, we have a complete mobile and virtual workforce. Uh, all of our executives are scattered all over the world. Uh, Everybody is connected in through a single technology system. It's very simple to set up. Um, <clears throat> and our workforce is allows us and our structure allows us to find the very best people in the world uh, to work for our company without having to, 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 to unroot them. If the very best person for a particular job happens to be living in London, well, we don't have to say, geez, you need to relocate yourself, your family, your kids to California in order to take this job. We're very comfortable and we found very productive by allowing people to work where they want in whatever uh, family environment or cultural environment they want. Um, without being disruptive, and it saves us a ton of money, uh, and it saves companies all over the world who are doing this a ton of money. We're not unique. Yeah. Um, and more than that, it allows people to stay with their family. I mean, think of how many jobs that you maybe have had, or people you know have had, where uh, somebody had to uproot their family and their children out of school, and and maybe may move away from aging parents yeah. in order to take a, a position, or turn down the position and kind of put a crimp on their lifestyle or their, their business, their business sure. Uh, opportunities. Sure. So, well, um, it, it is so nice that, that is going on. And I, I think the issue, the second issue is it's not just companies that work virtually like us, but if you look at the single biggest commodity in the workplace now, um, it's personnel. Um, I can just as easily hire a programmer in Russia or the Philippines or Latin America or Europe or America. It doesn't really matter to me where they are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what matters is the quality of their work. And software, teams, team management software, product and program management software is all available uh, today to, to uh, manage that kind of a workforce. Yeah. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and it's very, very simple, uh, we find. And it's nice to be able to work 24-7 on a project, just following the sun around the world rather than stop and start it every day. Right. So well, we've, we've we have got a, a lot of lot of that. And virtual officing is what's allowed that to occur. Sure. Well, we've got to wrap it up here. How do people find out more about this or get in touch with you and your company? Well, the easiest thing to do is to go to AllianceVirtualOffices.com Perfect. or ABCN.com. Great. That's or if you want to find news and information about the whole workforce, you can go to allwork.space. And that's that's a great new publication you have. So I recommend that people take a look. Well, Frank, thanks again for being on the show. And uh, we'll be back with more of The Price of Business right after these messages. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help. 